Hey everybody, so today we're going to look at how to use the new checkboxes in Microsoft Excel to move data back and forth between worksheets. Now I've picked two scenarios that are the most popular and most common, but keep in mind that with these checkboxes, the possibilities are almost endless. And this is, in my opinion, one of the best and absolutely one of my favorite new tools that Microsoft has deployed in a long time. So what we're going to look at first is from a project management perspective. If we have a list of open tasks and we mark one as completed, we want to move it to our completed worksheet. And then we're going to look at it from a business perspective. If we have a list of invoices and we mark one that's paid, we want it to move over to the paid worksheet. So here we have some tasks and they're all open. Nothing's been done with them yet. We have our task name, due date, priority, and who it's assigned to. Now in column A, we have our check boxes. And if we either hover over it or we select it in our formula bar, it's going to tell us false. If we click on one of them and check it, it's going to tell us true, but nothing happens. So we're going to use this true or false or whether it's checked or unchecked to determine which one of these sheets it belongs in. To access our Visual Basic code, we're gonna do Alt F11. Now, if you'll notice on the left-hand side, there are a couple Visual Basic projects open, and we wanna make sure we're on the right one because I have several workbooks open. I have one open for the project management piece, and then I have a workbook open for the invoice piece. So we wanna make sure that we're on the one for our tasks, and we're going to tell it this workbook and we're gonna double click. And if you just look up here, it says move completed task to completed worksheet. So I know for sure I'm on the right one. And then I'm going to paste my code in here. So I'm just gonna take this code and break it down for you really quick. And then we're gonna look at it in action or actually how we're using it. So if you remember when I showed you that in column A, if the checkbox is not checked, then that formula bar says false. If it is checked, it says true. So what this is doing here, we're gonna start here. If check cell value is true, or if it's checked, then I'm going to move that row from the source sheet, that's what this means, source sheet, which is tasks, to the destination sheet, which is completed. So if I mark that first row, it's gonna move it over to completed. Now this else if here, I've put this in here because this is something I've experienced, so I thought it was just a good idea to include it. I've had a task that I've put over into my completed worksheet and for whatever reason something happened and I need to get it back because it's no longer a closed task. It still has to be done. So this just goes in the reverse order. It's going to evaluate that completed worksheet and if something in there is not checked, it's going to move it back the other way. Okay, and we'll look at this more in action here in just a second. Then the next thing that we're doing is when we copy that row to either sheet going either way, it's going to delete it. Now, one thing I did put in here is this right here is going to put it at the bottom. The one thing I did not put into this code is for it to put it back in its original state. I thought about that, but you can have tasks or invoices or anything that six months down the road, you might need to put it back. And it's just easier to put it at the bottom than try to do a macro that you've done maybe a hundred changes figure out where it was originally so that's not what this is going to do it's just going to put it at the bottom of whichever sheet it's moving it to so now that we've got that we can go ahead and next out of here now we want to make sure that we save this as a macro enabled workbook to do that we're going to go to file save a copy go to the destination where you want it to be saved and make sure that you select excel macro enabled workbook and tell it to save and now let's see how it works so let's just take this first one, update client records, and let's select it or let's check it as done. If you notice it's gone, we go to our completed and it's there and it automatically brings over the check mark. Now if I uncheck it, which is the second part I told you about, it's gone, it moved it back, but it put it to the bottom. So now let's look at it from an invoice perspective. So here we have invoice data. We have invoice number, date, due date, amount, and customer. We have a worksheet for our invoices and worksheet for paid. Now, if we go up to our check boxes, they look the same. If it's unchecked, it says false. If it's checked, it says true. So let's go add our Visual Basic code and we wanna do Alt F11. 
Now, this is what we talked about a little bit earlier because I have the two open. It's going to pop me into the one that we just worked with. So let's make sure that we're up at the top one that says invoice and paid. Go to this workbook and double click and paste in our Visual Basic code. And this really is the exact same code, except for if check sale value is true, it says invoices. So it's checking that first sheet of invoices and it's moving it to paid. And then it's moving it back from paid to invoices. So basically the same code. So let's go ahead and next out of here. Now let's see how this works. We have our first invoice. Let's go ahead and check it. It went away. We go over to paid and that's where it's at. If we uncheck it here, we go back to invoices, it put it at the bottom. Let's do multiples, see them disappearing. They go back to paid. If we uncheck them here, they go back to open invoices. Just make sure that you save each one of your workbooks as a macro enabled workbook. We're gonna go to file and go to save as. Make sure you choose Excel macro enabled workbook and tell it to save. And now to be ready to use anytime you open your workbook. And again, keep in mind, these check boxes are very flexible and can be used in just about any scenario where you need to move things back and forth between worksheets. And that's it for today. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, follow, comment, and all of that good stuff. Connect with me on social media and hop on out to my website, melcompton.com for written instructions for this tutorial and so much more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.